Hey guys, how are you all doing? So Dan from Trading with Dan here. This is our Bitcoin evening wrap up. Um, so I know the sounds okay this time, so that's good. Um, so we'll go straight over to those charts. Um, so yeah, um, so obviously we had a little bit of a sell off today. Um, I was looking um, for a, a sell off to around about this 9,500, 9,400, but I was, um, I was fully, I was fully open, um, open for a move down to this trend line and a basically a wick down to the support. I think that's, I think that's like exactly what I was saying in this morning's video. Not that it was necessarily going to happen, um, just that I could see it happening. Um, and it would be it would be quite reasonable um, for it to happen. So yeah, it, it's happened. We basically we've had this sell down. Um, we had um, basically the break of this uh, trend line, how I've drawn it anyway. Um, but more importantly, um, the break of that to then get supported at this support level that we had down here. Um, and we've subsequently managed to find our way back up for the time being anyway. For the time being, back um, back above the trend line, which is obviously good. I just want to show you guys this four-hour nine that we've got going on here. So um, <clears throat> you guys obviously know um, how much I love these four-hour nines, and obviously that signalled um, a, a fantastic sell trade for obviously a massive move down. So shout out to Tom Demark. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, um, so what what's going to happen now? I mean. The the main thing that I'm watching, as I've been making clear in a lot of my um, videos recently, is um, yeah, you guessed it, you guessed it, is the S and P. So the S and P has got its own little pennant formation going on here. In um, coincidentally, from its own daily nine, and um, we we saw our initial weakness. Um, so yeah, that faked out below the pennant to what is the 200 daily, and also you guys know 200 days is an important moving average. So this could just be a back test of the 200 day or a test of the 200 day, not necessarily a back test. Um, and then um, we find ourselves back in the pennant. So unless we come down and see follow through and closures below here, um, then well, the natural bias for this market obviously is for it to drift upwards, um, <laughs> drift upwards in a in a in a near <laughs> near vertical fashion. <laughs> but um, yeah, but so we've got the seven the seven eight six. So I do believe if we reclaim this seven eight six then that it will just be onwards and upwards upwards from there i mean we may we may form a bit of a range temporarily up here where we test the 786 as support and then move on so my point is is that we've got to keep a watch out for what happens here whether we do actually break this 200 daily and move below and start to move lower or whether we do regain the 786 and start to look bullish again because that will have a massive effect on bitcoin um and and obviously where we go we've now obviously got this um overhead resistance um that i've got to deal with um and also this trend line that we are now clearly um back inside um of this pennant um so we're clearly back inside there um so yeah i mean looking at this this could be like the fake out to the up above and then we literally um collapse below that sort of thing happens just happen a lot um so that's something you've got to be aware of because that um, it could be potentially quite bearish um well it would, would be quite bearish obviously if we collapse down if we just faked out above and we come back and collapse down um so but hopefully we're not seeing that hopefully we are seeing like i said um just a squeeze just a squeeze of the people that got really bullish up here the people that got really bullish along here we just we're just squeezing them out look we are lower now we are lower than we did, did actually trade lower than than this whole formation apart from this wick here um so um so yeah i mean we we definitely squeezed out a lot of the longs and remember this market does uh, this market is um is especially uh, known for messing with people's melons and um, so yeah i mean this is almost one of the bar formations isn't it all the way up trade around all the way down um it's just a it's a mini bar isn't it if we look at it on an hourly time frame it may look even more like one more, more like a bar foundation a bar foundation <laughs> bar formation um but yeah um, I've actually taken some longs here. I was telling people in the group. I'd always plan to take longs here. Um, obviously, I told you guys I pulled the orders here because I'm not going to buy into something that is collapsing like that that quick. Um, you, it's it's not just levels. It's not it's not just levels and um, just sticking orders in. Um, that is, it, that's not that's so suboptimal basically um, trading wise. Um, you kind of want to wait for it to. Um, it to like consolidate or play out in it, play out for a bit 
in a certain level before you then try to take the longs. So I did actually, if you look down to the shorter time frame, I pulled my longs, I pulled my trades there. I waited actually on this one hour until um, we got to about this um, this one hour nine. And then I, um, well, I think I did buy just before actually on the eight because we were looking like we're going up and stock market's looking like we're going up. And it is an eight candle. I know it goes against like my own TD rule, but I didn't, I didn't really look at the one hour time frame anyway. I'm just showing you where I got in. I got in here uh, initially, but it was only for a small part of my position. Um, and then I bought another small part, a smaller part of my position, um, actually around, because then we started to come down quick again. So I just didn't, wasn't interested in just picking a level. So then I bought at 250-ish, um, 245, when we started to look like we were going to come back up again. Um, and then I bought um, at 200 as well. So I'm still not in a full size position here anyway. Um, and incidentally, um, my stop um is is actually just below here so i was getting close to my stop I, I was fully expecting my stop to get hit in all fairness i wasn't even in a full size position because just the the velocity of the sell off didn't um give me enough um opportunities for me to want to add um uh, parts of my position on um because like i said i don't just place them at a random place um and not, not random so i don't i don't place them at a place that looks good before we get there if we come to that area quick then um you, it's not obviously going to be it's not it's probably not going to be the greatest buy uh, but yeah so i'm long i'm long anyway here so we're back inside here i mean like i said stock market's looking like they're going back up again nascoin is um over 10k again um i am fully confident they're going to prop these stock markets up so we, we haven't really seen many sell-offs like this in the stock market that haven't then been bought up and <clears throat> we've only got to wait till 3am and 3am buyer will come in and just bid the market up anyway uh, but yeah talking about just not not basically buying um, on the way down so imagine you're looking to short bitcoin and we're sort of going up in this fashion here i mean would you just say right i'm going to short this resistance even though we fly up to it or i'm going to short this resistance even though we fly up to it even though this would have been a great short if you're watching it in real time are you do you want to do you want to short that level when we were just flying up and we know don't know how high it could go it's the same when we're coming down you don't just when the market moves down fast just pull your orders and <laughs> and incidentally that's what a lot of people do um especially a lot of bigger traders um they'll just pull their orders and let the market come down because if they, why buy why why do they want to buy if the market's flying down because if they pull their orders the market's going to fly down more and they'll be able to buy lower if they if they want to buy they want to buy still um so yeah so um but yeah overall um overall obviously <coughs> bitcoin's <clears throat> well, I mean, what a difference! Uh, what a difference a uh, five hundred dollar sell off can make. <laughs> we were looking looking really good, um, <clears throat> but like I said, this move I felt came up too quick, um, too through too many levels for it to then to continue to then to break out and just be like <clears throat> Bitcoin bull run twenty twenty. I did feel it needed to come back and test some of these levels, and and I did suspect it could um, it could come back and test these levels, especially when I saw how quickly it came down to test these levels. So I was not surprised when we um, <clears throat> we slammed back down again. So um, yeah, oscillators are clearly not going to be looking as good. Um, so let's get these four hours on. Um, <clears throat> what I say about the four hour um, is that there's a song, isn't there? Like the only way is up um yeah so it's just yeah <laughs> that, that explains my sentiment right here so we're going to struggle to get much lower than this in the four hour stokes Fa famous last words there guys um so um i think the only way is up basically that's the song isn't it we've got it so um this i think is going to turn around especially if we um if we move back and hold above nine thousand three hundred. Um, it's amazing that we're saying that isn't it what literally what a difference um even like a day can make even 12 hours um <laughs> i just want to start singing song lyrics now just just 24 little hours guys um but yeah um we were we were looking at um at nine thousand four seven hundred, weren't we and like are we going to break up and now i'm talking about if we can hold nine thousand three hundred. but that's bitcoin that's the volatility that's what we love about bitcoin isn't it that's what that's why it attracts traders it's like the flashing lights of the the price movement um anyway so 12 hour um 12 hour 12 hours are doing what we didn't want them to do um <clears throat> so trend line here um i don't know if i'm gonna yeah trend line basically so <laughs> that's not good it's not good if we're looking to hit this trend line put it that way um 
because that gives us a good um, a good um, a good move down to have. But um, we could pick we could get picked up around somewhere around this level anyway, and then we could um, <laughs> we could very optimistically be starting to form an inverted head and shoulders. Um, yeah, but um, I'm just not going to read too much into that. We basically just need this to turn up. I only really I only really look at the directions and the trend lines in these. Um, but yeah, we sort of need um, we need to turn back up basically daily. Um, daily is still um, <coughs> hasn't that confirmed it's crossed down. Um, I guess this is the line we just drew on the four hour. But yeah, um, daily is not not obviously crossed down yet. So if we can keep coming up, um, that would be good. Uh, <laughs> obviously, so if we can basically yeah, if price action can reverse and we keep going up, that'd be good. But I mean, these are these are looking. Um, these are looking a bit beat up these um oscillators but um but like i said guys i mean honestly it really comes down to the stock market we are we are following not necessarily obviously the absolute um ratios um but we are following the overall direction so it's this is all it comes down to um if these stock markets just drift up now and then the 3 a.m buy comes in and buys us up and etc etc Bitcoin, Bitcoin's going to be back at nine thousand five hundred. It's going to be back. It's going to be back at back knocking, knocking, knocking on the door of this resistance anyway. <clears throat> Obviously, this is going to be a pretty. Um, um, it's going to be it's, it's going to be resistance that we need to overcome. It's got in the four hour. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's obviously this has been a pretty strong resistance area. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking here. So. We've got to think about um, <coughs> making a move, basically, and <laughs> getting above here. Um, but yeah, um, anything else we can really see? Not, not too much really. Looking at this, no, not looking at this price. I mean, it's just a case. It's, it's kind. Of, I mean, I would fully expect, um, not fully expect, but I would not be surprised if we do just if we get a sort of move like this, where we've had the move down, um, and then we just trade higher. Uh, maybe consolidate and then trade higher. So we've had to move down, trade higher, which higher would be into this zone here, taking out the 9,800, um, consolidate and then potentially move up. I mean, we're running out of runway. <laughs> That's another song, isn't it? <laughs> running out of runway um, on this um, in this formation here. This can break at any time. Um, clearly, it could break to the downside. So we've got to we've got to remember that, guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, are they going to let the stock markets tank before um, November? No. So, um, is that gonna keep Bitcoin up? Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. So that's my that is my views on this, basically. Um, but obviously, I've got my stop. I'll be out of a trade then. I'll be out. No, it's not far from where we are. It's like it's a hundred dollars ish, just over. I'll be out of my trades anyway. Um, and I'll just be waiting to see what happens. Waiting to see how we react. See if I can then sell a retest if we're looking weak. If we basically sell down from here. I mean, if we do convincingly close below this support and, and convincingly close out this the trend line so it's not just like one of these wicks, then I think we're going to pretty much see 8,600 and then it'll be a case of selling selling the back test, um, which is like is one of the sa is a more safer way to trade basically. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Let's have a look at, um, at DMT and Dominator. I know they are going to be hooking us up with um, <coughs> lots of cash. Um, yeah, so look at that. That's amazing, isn't it? Um, DMT got you long. Um, great DMT buy. DMT then got you short. Great DMT sell. Dominator got you short here. Great Dominator sell. Dominator got you long here. Great Dominator buy. Um, this didn't really amount to much. And this actually did flip in the DMT as well from what was a buy. I mean, it literally was a case of not much that did flickers, flickers below to this cell, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, it did go on side, but then you could have, I mean, it did come on side. And then you could have stopped out at the stop line, which basically would have broke you even on that trade. And then you never got a re-entry cell until you actually got a fall on DMT long, which was here. Um, and then obviously that was a great trade. So DMT and Dominator really did really have sorted you out recently, really have basically made the money. Um for those people that do just trade those people that don't want to look into look into price action as detailed as this you can literally just trade this and do well basically do well um we'll just look at how far we're down from this sell entry we are down uh yeah three <clears> percent <throat> and from the dm the dominator entry we are down uh nearly four percent so great trades great trades guys that's all that's all you need really isn't it i mean i feel like i make myself make life hard for myself with this but um 
But hey, <laughs> um, and then range and stop is obviously um, not really um, helpful when we've actually when, when we're not ranging. I mean, it's called range and stop. So if the price action isn't ranging, then um, you can you can do the maths on that one. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, that's it really, guys. So it's a case of, I mean, initially, we've just got to hold this trend line. Then we've got to basically break through this resistance. Um, and then, I mean, I, I would I would feel pretty confident on BTC making a move up, even if it's not straight away, as long as we regain 95 and trade in this area. I would be pretty convinced um, that we're going to that we're gonna basically um, see some upside. Um see some even if you play this range out for a while and whilst the trend line is actually moving up so yeah that's something to think about um yeah that's kind of what i'm looking at guys and uh, but yeah so remember this is not a financial advice i'm not a financial advisor you should always um always do your own research um and yeah and i will uh speak to you guys soon